This is Valley Center TV on Monday, February 29th, 2016. This is David Ross, editor of the Roadrunner, bringing you the headlines from the pages of this week's paper. Rincon's Outdoor Market is back for another season of fresh local farm produce, local artisan foods, as well as arts and crafts made by local artists and crafters. Opening day is Sunday, March the 6th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Look for the Outdoor Market's Big Tent and signs north of Harris Casino at the address shown on your screen. Market days are one Sunday a month, March the 6th, April 3rd, May the 1st, June the 5th, July 10th, and a special holiday gift market on November 20th. Once again, the Rincon Tribe is providing a large event tent and kids jumper and staff from the Rincon Recreation Department in a contribution towards the overall comfort and success of market days. Local farmers include Solidarity Farm, Rio Del Rey Farm, Jesus Andrade, and Jameson Meist, plus other new local growers. For more information, contact Diana Sauerbeer at the number and email address on your screen. Hey, this is uh, David Ross with Valley Center TV, and this afternoon we have with us Allison Krauthammel, the 2015 Miss Valley Center. How are you, Allison? I'm pretty good. How about yourself? I'm very good. Thanks for coming in. We brought you in because we wanted to talk about the the upcoming Miss Valley Center uh, pageant at the Maxine Theater. That's the 16th, am I right? Or March 19th. March 19th. Saturday. Saturday. And uh, I've noticed... Uh, on the times that I've been there that it never fails to fill up the entire Maxine Theater. Yes, we have lots of fans. All the Valley Center comes out. Nobody misses it. What do you think is such is so special about the Miss Valley Center pageant? I think the most special thing about the Miss Valley Center pageant is that it's an opportunity opportunity that's available to all of our girls in our community and there's nothing really restrictive about it. So everybody gets together, we get to make new friends. Everybody comes out more professional, more confident, and with a lot of great experiences behind them, no matter what happens, if they walk away with a crown or not. So there's no cutthroat competition then, huh? No, it's definitely not. I always tell everybody that Miss Valley Center is the best pageant that you could run for because it's so much different than any other pageants. It's just like our town. It's small, and it um, just really brings everybody together. It's a really positive experience. What do you think are the skills that the pageant gave you that are going that you're going to be using from now on in your life? Well, since I began my journey in the Valley Center Pageant Association in 2009, I got all of my interview skills that I've used constantly up until this point to get new jobs, to interview for promotions. I've just learned how to act and talk and walk like a lady, and I think that was the best thing that I could walk away with. What would you say uh, was, well, before we were uh, being filmed, you uh, told me what you thought were some of the most fun things about being Miss Valley Center. Do you recall, recall that? Yes. What? <laughs> I have a long list because I can't really choose one, but I did love Western Days. I got an opportunity to be in the parade, and then I got to face paint all day, and that was one of my favorite things, getting to meet a bunch of different kids. But then all year long, I loved the Valley Center Chamber of Commerce Sundowners. I got to meet everybody else on the business side of the community, and they gave me a microphone. <laughs> ah, well. Now, since you really like kids, uh, you were mentioning to me that you might uh, possibly become a teacher at some point. Yes, my mom is a teacher, and so I spend a lot of time in the classroom growing up and volunteering. And then when I went to college to earn my sociology degree, I did an internship at her elementary school in Oceanside. And I really enjoyed working with the guidance counselor and all the um, grade level teachers it was a great experience, and I think I'd like to go back and use my scholarship money to get a teaching credential. What, if we're, if we're going to the pageant, uh, what would we look for that might be, I mean, what's, what, what are these girls going to be really working hardest on? Uh, the, the impromptu question, the, uh, the, uh, the suit, the, what, what, are, what, what are they worried, what makes them sweat? 
You know, well, it's funny because we're not judged on it, but I think the most nerve nerve wracking part of the whole pageant is the dance mm -hmm. because we all have to learn it. Most of us aren't naturally dancers, so that's our one big opening debut on pageant night. So that dance is everything that we're working on, trying to memorize and work together because we all have to be on time together and kind of impress everybody and get them excited for the long night ahead. But the speeches are also, we're all mem working on memorizing them, and that's a big thing, too. Mm -hmm. You'd hate to be in front of that microphone and forget your speech. That's all of our worst fears. But we're practicing what to do just in case that does happen. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure many of us look forward to seeing the pageant this, uh, this year and uh, uh, honoring you as you say goodbye to the crown and, and go on to do other things. So uh, thank you very much for coming in today. And I'm hoping that we'll get you to stick around to do a little bit of uh, news reading. Absolutely. We hope to see you all there on March 19th. It's going to be an elegant evening, so we expect everybody to dress up to the nines just like we will be. Now, what's the uh, theme this year? It's an elegant evening. That's Oh, that's the theme. It's okay. an elegant evening in Valley Center. So um, everybody that's taking the tickets are going to have white gloves. We're going to have live piano. My dad is renting a tux, which is going to be a first. He's kind of excited oh okay <laughs> but yes everybody's encouraged to dress up and it should be a very formal event for this little town good thank you yeah you're welcome the 22nd annual vc irish stew cook-off sponsored by the valley center knights of columbus and the valley roadrunner the only one held in san diego county will happen on march 17th 5 30 to 8 p.m at the st stephen's parish hall organizers say a few spots remain open if you want to be part of the fun I'll be there. You can enter as a business, service club, or individual. Cook a couple of pots of good stew, decorate yourself and table in lots of green, and bring a bribe basket for the judges to be auctioned off during the silent auction. All proceeds benefit the local high school kids for college. Winners are selected on best stew, table decorations, and bribe basket. The cost to enter the stew competition is $10. The organizers provide the table, Applications are available online or by email. We'll see you there. Dos Valles Garden Club will hold its plant sale and seed swap Saturday, March the 12th, 8 a.m. until noon. The club encourages shoppers to bring extra seeds to the sale to swap for seeds donated by nationwide seed suppliers. The sale will be held at Martin Gang Ranch on the address shown on your screen. The Mobility Subcommittee of the Valley Center Community Planning Group will meet Monday, March the 7th from 6 p.m. onwards in Room 5 of the Community Hall on Lilac Road to revisit plans to expand Coal Grade Road to a three-lane highway that would require the removal of 180 oak trees. The public is encouraged to attend. The Valley Center Palma Music Boosters will present the 19th Annual Free Community Jazz Concert featuring the Valley Center Middle and High School Jazz Bands and the High School Choirs Saturday, March 5th at 2 p.m. The doors open at 12.30 p.m. with meal items and refreshments to purchase. The concert is at the Maxine Theater, which is part of the high school. The design work on the future roundabout at the intersection of Highway 76 and Valley Center Road is being finalized. Caltrans District Division Chief for Traffic Operations, Marcelo Pinedo, told reporters recently, we looked at different alternatives, including a signalized intersection, and a roundabout has come out as the preferred alternative. Caltrans began the design portion of the roundabout about a year ago. There is a little bit of overlap between the planning and design phrase, said Pinedo. The design portion is expected to be completed during March. The schedule is being driven by right-of-way acquisition. The process of advertising and awarding a construction contract will precede the actual construction, which is expected to begin in January 2017. The roundabout will likely be completed in late 2017 or early 2018. The project will be built in little over a year, Pinedo said. The roundabout work will disrupt the intersection during the construction period. Quote, we will re detour around the project and there are no good detours. It's kind of a remote area, he said. Interested in promoting your business? Looking to expand to a new market? Or just want to support your local newspaper? We're here to help. Roadrunner Publications has numerous platforms of media available that can help you with just that. 
From the Valley Roadrunner, to the Escondido Times Advocate, to the Boulevard Magazine, Valley Center Magazine, and more. Give me a call and I can walk you through all your options to fit your business needs. We're offering great discounts and even more if you want to bundle with multiple products. Remember, if you advertise in any of our print, we offer free online advertisements within our numerous websites. I can be reached at 760-749-1112. That's all for today. Please let us know what you think about this program. See you next time, and in the meantime, look for the latest news in the Valley Roadrunner and online at valleycenter.com.